Hello everyone, welcome to the Jargus Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the 15th episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Seeing Red. Oh boy, now this was quite an episode. There was a lot of good stuff packed into here. First of all, we start off with the running gag with Ben and Betty being General Burke's birthday. So they got their father a cake and they're carrying it down the street. Completely open instead of in a plastic casing or anything. <laughs> I do not know what bakery they got that from, but that was not a good move on their part. Till a cop just shoves it right in Ben's face because he's chasing after a bank robber in broad daylight. But Devin morphs into the Red Ranger, and he chases after with his cheetah speed. And at this point, they're getting away in the car, but Devin just stops it and lifts it up, thanks to the enhanced power of his fury mode. And the cop has an actual, more realistic way of responding to the Red Ranger pretty much acting as a vigilante. <laughs> he says, just stick to the Robotrons and the Gigadrones and we'll handle the criminals. So wow, right off the bat, we got some serious stuff going on. <laughs> and Devin doesn't really have time to argue because he is called away to a battle against some um, Tronics. While Vaxi is just sitting at a nearby table, <laughs> just relaxing, watching the fight. Till she finally decides to create her Robotron, Burnertron, who's made from a candle. And just when she's about to power it up with a new fury cell, Devin steals it. And just in time too because his old fury cell ran out of energy. So it wasn't doing much good anyway. <laughs> so he just pops a new one in and just keeps going all powered up. Oh yeah, they turn to just pretty much black and empty when they run out of at power. So Devin is able to just completely send Roxy and Bernatron running off. They can't really do anything. And of course Grazzle gets on a case about it because she screwed up again and lost another uh, Fury Cell. At least this time it was just one, unlike Blaze who lost two at the same time. However, Scrazzle exposes that it may not be that bad of a situation because the Fury Cells can gradually turn even the most noble warrior into an evil being. So in other words, they're like a slow acting version of the Dark Energy from Dino Charge. <laughs> and this is shown off right away because even in the middle of the fighting, Devin interrupted the other rangers, he just lunged forward, just being reckless and attacked on his own, pretty much being a one-man army, to which even Commander Shaw says he's hurting the team. Nate does take a bit of his hair and he analyzes it, and it says it's affecting his brainwaves and such, to be a lot more primal. And we see this throughout the episode. I mean, Devin doesn't like hearing that, he says he don't need the team, he can do it all on his own. And when he goes to the gym, he just challenges two guys to a fight who are just practicing some martial arts there. And he is way over aggressive. And he only stops because he has to leave. But not before causing the second cake for the general to fall on a chair. He just slides it right off a table in the midst of his careless fighting. You know, by letting it spill over from the excise area into the seat. This is a lot more like Ernie's Juice Board from Mighty Morphin than I realized. I think I should have picked up on this a long time ago. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't. And then this time, Betty sits right on it when she's asking where the cake is. So those two are unfortunately back to square one. The first time was a little of their fault because they were holding it together out in the open. Completely unprotected. Now, I'm assuming this new one was made somehow inside the Riptide Gym. I don't know what kind of food services they got there, but it's probably being counterintuitive to the place being a fitness center. <laughs> I'm just saying here. But the second time, it's all Devin's fault because that was in a place where it has a reasonable expectation to be secure. Oh, and there's nothing wrong with the two guys Devin challenged. They just happened to be there and he just got excited. I mean, he's really getting a thrill out of battle. I mean, you can see, he just gets so excited when he's dominating his, his opponent. And I really like this because it shows that he still takes fighting seriously. He doesn't play around. But you can see, he just gets this sinister delight out of just com total and complete victory. <laughs> so I really like how it shows that he's changing, but he's still who he is. Mostly. <laughs> Now when Bernatron returns, the team is separated, so Roxy is slowly dragging the fight out, especially announcing that she's going to use the last Fury Cell to power up Bernatron. Obviously this was a debate to draw on Devin because he takes it, but before he can use it, Ravi takes it and the two of them start fighting over it, to the point where the Blue Ranger is using his enhanced strength to try and deal with the Red Fury mode. But it's not enough, the Fury Cell is just too powerful, and he begins to overheat, 
to the point where he is forced to demorph, but he still refuses to give the and I almost called this an anagem. No. <laughs> The Fury Seal to Devin, because he knows it's corrupting him. But Devin just summons the Cheetah Claws, faces them towards Ravi. Now Ravi is really exhausted, he can't put up much of a fight, so Devin just takes it. When it looks like he was about to just cut his head off to get his hands on that extra power. And wouldn't you know it, a second after that, the Fury Mode disengages because the Cell ran out of the energy. But when he's just about to place in the, the final Cell to replace it, Devin stops himself. Because without his influence, his mind has become clear. He realizes what he's done. So he helps Ravi up and takes him back to Grid Battle Force. And he apologizes to the commander. And I like this. <laughs> she basically combines the two aspects of her character. Being Ravi's mother as well as the head of this branch of the military. She just says, my boy's tough, but thanks for being him back. <laughs> I don't know, I just really thought that was a fun and clever line. And it kept her in line with the character she's been as well. Of course, before he takes Ravi back, I almost forgot to say this. He smashes the last fury cell and tosses it at Roxy. Apparently she takes damage from that. She can't absorb any energy from what's left in it. I thought it was weird. Or maybe the shards just hit her so hard it actually really hurt a lot. <laughs> when he returns to battle, Devin uses his super speed to do some hits to Burnertron. However, it's not enough and he can't finish the fight because the Giga Drone version shows up. So he fights it with, with the Razor Zord, but it's not quite enough power to defeat it. His flame even sets the Morphex Tower on fire. So Nate and Steel have to use their Striker Megazord to destroy it. It looks a lot better this time. I mean, you see a lot more of the goldness. Before it looked, well, a lot more metallic. Or maybe it was just the way I was looking at it before it didn't look right. But anyway, I thought the Megazord looked a lot more impressive. And he even put out the fire on top. As for the Robotron version, he's defeated when his candle gets put out. And that's enough for the Rangers to combine their Beast Blasters as well as the Striker Morphers. Yeah, because they finish off the Robotron slightly before the brothers join. The Zord battle. So ultimately it's defeated, but the data chip is left behind, this time undamaged. And Moxie takes it. The end scene is back at the gym, and the general tells the rangers good work, but he whispers it to him. Like it's some big secret? I'm getting confused here. He talks about the ranger business in public, but Devin hides who he is when he morphs. They really haven't explained, really, if being the rangers is a secret or not. Because obviously everyone inside Grid Battle Force knows. But what's going on with the rest of the public? Obviously they don't know the Rangers' identities. But at the same time, there's been no precedence that they have to remain secret. So hopefully the writers will clear this up on their own. Otherwise this is just going to keep bugging me. Because they never once said these were secrets. But they're acting like they are even though they're technically agents of the local government. Anyway, Devin gives the twins a new cake as his apology. And he gives them the icing so they can write happy birthday dad on it themselves. Unfortunately, when they're messing with it, since they're the comic relief, it just bursts out and gets in the general's face. He really likes the taste of it, but he takes the other tube of it and just sprays his kids with it. And you know, this is the best he's ever been. Like, his acting just sounds the most natural in this whole scene, even though he's there for like 30 seconds across the entire episode. But I love it, he's perfect. Like, his voice doesn't sound over the top, he sounds like he can be a real person. Even though when he's going overly juvenile with how he attacks his kids with ice. It was still real fun. It was still a real fun showing. And I hope they keep this portrayal of him better going forward. Where he can be both casual as well as very serious and doing his job. Now in the Cyber Dimension, Scrozzle is always furious because he's mad at the avatars making mistakes yet again. However, they have three data chips now. Yeah, this is something I wasn't sure about, but now they clarified it. These are three different data chips for each of their powers of the three core rangers. Now Roxy says that she is going to get the power, but Blaze Intervene says that Evox should choose him. Scrozzle just tells them to go bicker somewhere else because he has work to do getting the data ready for transfer. But why should it be Blaze? He collected none of the powers. All three of them were collected by Roxy. And yes, I double checked with past episodes. All three powers were from Robotrons that Roxy created and sent out. Nothing Blaze did ever got any data for the, the data chips. So we'll see what happens. So now the data chip saga is about to reach its climax. And we've mentioned Vargoyo a bit, so maybe he has something to do with this. I'm looking forward to see the next episode. I hope you are too. Why don't you tell me what you thought in 
in the comments below. This is definitely an A episode and I'd recommend watching it. This has been Jargus, thanks for watching, and until next time, let the power protect you. It's more than time. For justice we fight with these more